with you on Goals Zone this Sunday afternoon. So the results over the course of the weekend with one match still to go. Victories for Manchester City, Spurs and West Ham. Brighton, Brentford, Leeds and a two-all draw between Chelsea and Liverpool. So let's go pick out some of the storylines from the weekend. And Arsenal fans, Tim Howard, if you're an Arsenal fan, after what happened on mm -hmm. Saturday, how are you feeling right now about the process, the project under Mikel Arteta, do you think? I feel really good, but for a red card, uh, Arsenal should have beat Manchester City, played really, really well. I'm looking at just not the singular game, but looking at the overall identity of the team. They're starting to have this identity of passing forward, moving forward, a bit like the old Arsenal that we're used to, not just possessing it for the sake of possession, but playing forward quickly. What I really like about this Arsenal team is a back four, a solid back four, a really standout goalkeeper. They haven't had that in at least a decade. I mean, a real reliable back four that can give them a base to do this. And this is that free-flowing football scoring that Arsenal that we're accustomed to seeing. Is this about as encouraged and as positive as Arsenal fans do you think have been in a while? It feels like some of either, even the biggest naysayers are just starting to change their mind about Arteta. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's always exciting for me when there's young players coming through. So you can get excited when you change a team and sign some great players, etc. But when there's, when there's so many changes and it's so transitional as it is right now, you're hoping for greatness. And you're hoping that Saka and Smith Rowe and Odegaard can go on and be great Arsenal players. And the signs... Well, it's a long time down the road for that, but the signs are good right now. And in the game, I just thought the organisation of the team, the when to drop off, when to press, some of the football, the finishing, was really, really quality stuff. And that's, again, full marks to Mikel Arteta. Turned it around from a, a really poor start into something now that I think the Arsenal fans can genuinely be um, cautiously optimistic of a bright future. Yeah, and let, let me just say this. With, with the Aubameyang situation, don't think there's any way back for him. So if, if he goes out the door, it's going to be for a relatively decent fee. And they've bought well. They've bought players well, bought young, mm. talented, can come right into the team. You, you would imagine that money will be then reinvested. There, there's, there's some real, real optimism there. Actually, that's what I was going to ask you quickly about Aubameyang. He's with Gabon at the African Cup of Nations. Do you think, like Tim, when he gets back or maybe while he's away, they'll sell him, they'll get rid? I think uh, as a, every possibility, yeah. I, I think it's tough to see him coming back now. I mean... He's been really thrown out of the squad and, and, and we can go to the, the Cup of Nations whenever you want. <laughs> go, go, go and join up to your team. Um, so, yeah, January window is open. Uh, salary's going to be a problem, mm -hmm. Rebecca. I mean, he's 30s, isn't he? I think he's into his 30s mm -hmm. now. Yep. So trying to find the right fit won't be easy. I don't know. It's just hard to see him getting reintegrated into this team. Well, well Arteta has been backed by the Kroenke family and by Adu. They're all on the same page there. So if he wants to get rid of them and sell them, they will sell them. Let's talk about your old club. Mm. Let's talk Everton. They're sitting in 15th position in the mm -hmm. table. Lost today against Brighton. For a while, some slack was cut because of the injuries. Today, mm. he had DCL back, had Dominic Calvert-Lewin, mm -hmm. who looked good. But they lost again at home, mm -hmm. which is a problem. So how, how much more credit in the bank has he got if he ever had any, Rafa? Well, I don't know if he has, a, he has a ton of credit in the bank going forward. Look, one win in 12 it doesn't make for good reading. Forget what players have available. That's not good. Um, nine set-piece goals conceded. I can assure you that's not about injured players. There's 11 players out there. There's one ball. You go ahead the thing. You know, and I look at their upcoming games, and yes, it, Leicester, Norwich, Villa, Newcastle, Leeds, Southampton, you think, okay, there's opportunity to get points there. Sure, there is, but those teams are also going to look at Everton as being wounded, and they're going to go, we can take points off Everton. So it's not as simple as going, oh, we have a nice little run of fixtures. Everything has to get it right quickly. And Tim, from what you can see and from what you know at the club, do you think the players are just not buying into him? Um, there doesn't seem to be any pattern of play. Uh, it, you know, Anthony Gordon was fantastic today, absolutely. And having Calvert Lumen back is brilliant because he's their talisman. But it doesn't really seem to be any sort of identity with this current team. So I'm not even sure if it's about buying or if they're not if they don't know exactly what is expected. Which is surprising, Robbie, because his track record, Rafa Benitez, is good as a manager. What's going wrong, do you think? I don't think the... Uh, I mean, we, we talk about the injured players a lot, and as you said, they're coming back now, Richard to come back. I think they will get better. But when you think about last year, 10th place under Ancelotti is, is average for Everton, and they're going backwards right now. So he's got, he's got his work cut out to try and elevate them this season. What's going wrong? I don't think... I think the, the squad is, is pretty average. Mm -hmm. There's some standouts. Anthony Gordon is a big positive from this season. But in general, I don't think defenders are very good. I think Michael Keane's very average. Mason Holgate does some great things, does a lot, makes a lot of mistakes. Shaman Coleman, Coleman is, is a little older now, playing in a different position today with Luca Dina falling out with the manager. So there's lots of things to, to, to figure, to work through. 
it's just a little upsetting, I should imagine, for Mashiri, the owner, when he spent a ton of money over the last mm -hmm. few years and the squad looks a little short. Well, they're not short of money. Maybe some more, do you think, reinforcements to come in January to help Rafa? Well, they have to. Listen, if he falls out with Luca Dina, you might have to sell him. He's, he's a sellable asset, so get, get him out the door and get money in, absolutely. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.